This lesson will take a look at the axial skeleton. So you can see a picture here of the different bones which are involved. We're going to be looking at the skull bones, the vertebrae, and the rib cage. So starting with the skull, there's two sets of bones we'll be investigating. The cranial bones, there are eight of them. And you can see that only the parietal and temporal bones come in pairs. So they come in a left and a right version. The other four cranial bones are individual bones. Then we'll move on to the facial bones. There are 14 of them, and there are only two individual facial bones, the vomer and the mandible. All of the rest come in pairs with a left and a right. In addition to that, we'll take a look at the hyoid bone. The auditory ossicles are not visible in uh, the app that we're going to be using. So here we have the skull and you can see that you can highlight individual bones of the skull and the name will pop up when you do that. So that's the frontal bone right there. We have parietal bone, that's the left one. There's also a right one. Temporal. The occipital. And these are separated by sutures. So you see the lambdoid suture right here for the uh, border of the occipital bone. We also see the sagittal suture right here separating the parietal bone. And then right here we have the coronal suture separating the frontal bone. There's another bone here called the sphenoid bone. This one's a little bit more difficult to see but you can kind of see it uh, is part of the eye orbit. So it uh, makes up the back of the eye orbit and you can also see it a little bit on the sides. And there's one final cranial bone, which is right here inside of the nasal cavity. And that is the ethmoid bone. Okay, next we're going to investigate some of the specific features and details and markings. So looking just at the frontal bone, we have this little central region right here above the nose called the glabella. Then we have the superciliary arches or also called supraorbital ridges. We have the border of the eye orbit right here. So the supraorbital border. And then it's a little hard to see, but there is a, a small notch right here. So that's called the supraorbital notch, which allows a pathway for things like nerves. And specifically, it does mention here, it's the supraorbital nerve, okay? Um, that's actually all you need to know for this bone. For parietal bone, there aren't any specific features that we're going to learn about. Now let's look at occipital bone. So right here, there's a large bump at the back of the skull called the external occipital protuberance. So you can kind of feel that. It's slightly larger usually in males than females. So it's a little bumpy region. Down here, we have the uh, occipital crest. Then this large opening, very large opening, it's called the foramen magnum. So the largest hole, it is where the spinal cord exits. And down here, we have these two condyles, the occipital condyles. They're going to articulate with your first cervical vertebra, which is the atlas. Now there are quite a lot of features on this temporal bone. So uh, before I zoom in on it, notice there's something right here. This is your cheek, right? Your cheekbone. This arch is called the zygomatic arch, but it's actually made up of two bones, the zygomatic bone here in the front and the temporal bone here. So we're gonna be looking at this process right here, which is where the two uh, bones connect. So zooming in on the temporal bone, this region that I was just talking about is called the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And then the other bone will have its own process as well. There's a hole right here, which I'm sure you will recognize is the ear hole. So it's called the external auditory meatus. There's a very large process right here, a very large bump. It's called the mastoid process, and that's going to be where the sternocleidomastoid muscle connects, uh, which is a muscle we use to turn our head. 
behind it, there's a much smaller pointier process right here called the styloid process. It's very, very sharp, and that attaches to several different ligaments and muscles. Then here we have a depression. It's a little bit hard to tell, but that's actually a bit of a dip there. So that depression is called the mandibular fossa. That is where the jawbone, the mandible, is going to articulate so that you can open and close your jaw. Then if we turn it to the uh, internal view right here, you can see you have the hole again. Now it's called the internal auditory or acoustic meatus. And around it, surrounding it, we have what's called the petrous part of the temporal bone. That is where the uh, ossicles, the ear bones, are actually located in there. And those are the smallest bones of the body, but they're not visible right now since they're within that temporal bone. One last hole we can view in this bone is right here, and that is the carotid canal where the carotid artery is able to enter the skull to feed the brain. Now, I mentioned several sutures here. I just wanted to point out this suture right here that is the border of the temporal bone is called the squamous suture. Now let's move on to the sphenoid. So the sphenoid is a very interesting looking bone. When you isolate it, you can see it looks kind of like a butterfly. And so it has these greater and lesser wings. This is the greater wings. And then right above them are the lesser wings. Very unusual kind of feature. And in between those two wings, we actually have the uh, superior orbital fissure. Okay, so when you look into the eye, uh, the eye orbits, you can see this fissure right here, which allows uh, several um, nerves to enter into the eye area. Okay, and then right next to it, there's a smaller hole right here. That old hole is called the optic foramen or optic canal. That's going to be specifically for the optic nerve, which is for vision. So it's going to connect the back of the eye to the retina uh, for vision. The main portion of the sphenoid, the body, does contain a sinus. So there's some uh, open areas in there. And those sinuses can get filled with uh, things like fluid and mucus when you're sick. Now on the, this alternative view, you can see there's several more holes here. So let's take a look at some of these other holes. There's three in a row and they are distinguished by their shape. So the first one is called the foramen rotundum because it's sort of round. Then directly behind it, we have foramen ovale because it's kind of oval. And then this little tiny one here is called foramen spinosum. I just kind of think of it as spiny. That's how I remember it. So it's a much smaller one. And all three of those are uh, places where nerves can pass through this bone. Another really unique, interesting feature is this dip right here. So this dip is actually where the pituitary gland is able to be kind of protected at the base of the brain. And because it looks like a saddle, that is actually where it got its name from. So Celatursica means Turkish saddle. So that's that little portion right there. And then we can see the optic canal again now from a posterior view. So returning to the skull, our last cranial bone is going to be this ethmoid bone, which is again, very difficult to see uh, from the front, but you can see it right here. It makes up the top portion of this nasal septum. So there's actually a different bone down here, which is gonna make up the bottom portion of the septum. Uh, but let's go ahead and zoom in on that ethmoid bone. You can see it's much uh, smaller than those other cranial bones, but this large portion right here, the perpendicular plate, is what makes up that top portion of the nasal septum. Then behind it, we have the main body, which is going to uh, have the uh, sinuses. So there's going to be an eth uh, ethmoid sinus as well. And then, let's see, there we go. Um, other interesting features, this little thing right here that looks kind of like a crown right here, that's called the crista galli. And the crista galli is going to be an attachment point for something called the falx cerebri, which is um, some membranes around the brain. So it kind of anchors the brain into place. Another interesting thing that you can see here, right here, this is called the cribriform plate. And if you zoom in on the cribriform plate, you see these tiny little holes. So what's going on here is that the 
um, olfactory bulb rests right above here, and the olfactory bulb is for the sense of smell. So these small nerves are going to descend down through the ethmoid bone into that nasal cavity underneath, and that way you can have your sense of smell. So that takes care of all of our cranial bones. Remember, there were only eight of those. Now let's look at some of these facial bones. So a couple of them, I'll just mention them all and then we'll look at some markings. Um, one of the smallest ones right here, nasal, is going to be right above the nose. So that makes sense. There's a left and right nasal bone. Then here with the eye orbit, what you're gonna notice is there's a tiny bone right here called the lacrimal bone. And the way to remember that is that the lacrimal glands are for tears. So the, the lacrimal glands are actually up in this region, but when your tears are draining, they're going to drain into a duct, which is over here in this portion of the eye. The other kind of interesting thing, if you take a look at this eye orbit, is the eye orbit has quite a few bones. So it has the frontal bone right here. It has this lacrimal bone right here, which is a facial bone, but then it also has the ethmoid bone, which we previously discussed. It has back here the sphenoid bone. And then the other two bones are going to be facial bones as well. So this one right here is the maxilla. So you have a left and right maxilla. The maxilla is going to be the top portion of your jaw, as well as the bottom of this eye orbit. And then over here, we have the zygomatic bone, which as I mentioned previously, is your cheekbone. Then of course, one of the only bones that isn't fused to the other ones is down here, that's the mandible, okay? So the mandible is the only one with a joint that allows it to uh, move. That's called the temporomandibular joint and it will make up the lower portion of the jaw with the teeth. Okay, and then the uh, last two bones are much harder to see. Uh, actually, there's three more. So down here, we've got vomer the vomer is going to make up the bottom portion of that nasal septum. And just so I can zoom in on as you can see, it's actually a super weird looking bone, kind of like a wedge. So it's right smack in the middle of, of the face. Then next to them, we have two more bones here at the part of the nasal cavity, which is, they're called the nasal conchi, okay? So there's actually a superior and middle a nasal conchi up here that are part of the ethmoid bone, but then there are two, um, inferior nasal conchi that are separate bones. And again, if you uh, separate them, you can see they're just kind of a small, weird, weird shape right there. Okay, so moving on, the palatine bone, you have to sort of flip upside down to see it. So you've probably heard of the, the hard palate before. So the hard palate is a part of the maxilla right, which was a bone we looked at previously, but near the back, you have these two additional bones called the palatine bones. And so there's a left and a right. And again, if we isolate them, very weird kind of shape uh, right there. So that's the palatine bone. So one last bone I will mention here is the hyoid bone. It is not technically part of the skull. It's actually the only bone in the body that does not articulate with any other, uh, any other bone. But what it does is it helps you with things like swallowing. And you can see that there is actually a ligament here connecting it to that spinous process, which we discussed previously, which was part of the temporal bone. So now let's look at some of the markings. For the smaller bones, you don't need to know any of the markings, uh, but let's say for maxilla, you can see there's a little hole right there. So let's find out the name of that hole. Nope, oh, it's just not letting me click on it, but that's okay. I can just tell you the name of the bone. It's the infra orbital foramen. So infraorbital meaning below um, the orbit, so below the eyes, infraorbital foramen. And then the other portion here that you might want to be familiar with right here, this is called the alveolar process um, of the maxilla. It's basically the region that is where your teeth are, okay? So where the teeth articulate with this bone. Anything else here? Um, you mentioned the hard palate right there. Okay.
And then this one has processes as well. Processes are just basically where it articulates with these other bones. So the frontal process, because it's going to, um, you know, touch the frontal bone right there. And then this would be the zygomatic process because it touches the zygomatic bone. So then speaking of the zygomatic bone, let's take a look at that one. We do want to review that there's that zygomatic arch and we had the zygomatic process of the temporal bone on this side. But now when we uh, look at the details of the zygomatic bone, it has its own temporal process, temporal process of the zygomatic bone, okay? And then the other ones are just the names of these other processes. Again, it's gonna um, articulate with the frontal bone and then it's going to articulate with the maxilla there. Okay, so that takes care of those two. And then the one that probably has the most details here that you want to know about is the mandible. So let's take a look at that mandible. So a lot of stuff going on here. Definitely know these two uh, bumpy regions sort of near the end. This one is going to be the condyle. Okay, so the condyle is the part that actually goes into that mandibular fossa that we looked at before. And it's the part that is going to um, be able to have a, a joint there that moves, okay? Then this next pointy portion right here that is called the coronoid process. And the coronoid process is going to attach to the muscle, specifically temporalis, which helps us with chewing. So it helps you with opening and closing that jaw. We do have <clears throat> this thick portion right here. This is just called the ramus of the mandible. And then it has a border, posterior and anterior border. Uh, there's an angle right here. The angle is one of the places where we can uh, use this to identify male versus female um, because the angle tends to be a sharper angle in males. We also see in the front, there's a little hole right there that is called the mental foramen. So we do have quite a few holes uh, in the skull. And then this portion right here, the chin portion is called the mental, uh, mental region, okay? We can also call it specifically the mental protuberance and the mental tubercle. And just as we saw with the maxilla, we do have an area here, the alveolar area where uh, the, the teeth articulate. Then from this uh, posterior view, from this posterior view, we can uh, observe one more tiny hole right here. Of course, there's a left and right, and that is the mandibular foramen. Okay, so that does wrap it up for the skull. And you can also see all of that in these pictures, all the different cranial bones and facial bones are listed here.